Okay. Welcome everyone to our drop-in meditation practice. And it's a, I feel like putting spring in quotation marks. It is spring, but it's, it's a March, is it 31st or 30th today? 30th? Yeah. And um, it was sleet, sleeting and icy here today where I am. Uh, but it is still springy and there have been very warm and thawing days. And uh, so the, the rivers and springs are really, really flowing. Um, the, the dam that I live nearby has um, opened up the gates and the river is very full and flowing. Last week I was visiting a place that was on one of the Great Lakes, um, Lake Ontario. And uh, um, when I was out walking, I, I was visiting, the, there was like a, it wasn't a river, it wasn't big enough to be a river, but a very full flowing, I guess a creek or something, I don't know, <laughs> names of waterways. But it there was a lot of spring flow, it was, everything was muddy, and um, so I walked along this creek bed and it had a very strong current where things were merging together and flowing towards the lake. And so then when I went to the place where that flow was meeting the big waves coming in from the Great Lake, I, it was very interesting and inspired this talk tonight, um, which is about crossing the floods, which is a part of the teachings of meditation. And so I was watching like this very strong current hitting these huge waves coming in and the way they interacted and created this massive undertow. You definitely would not want to go in that water. Very dangerous. Um, but it looked like how it feels these days, so much turbulence and mm, crashing directions and different views and turmoil and war and currents that feel like they they can pull us under very easily or overwhelm us. Yeah, so we may all be feeling this sense of the floods of life that can sometimes feel like they're going to sweep us away or overcome us or just really pushing us around. And our practices, our meditation practice is, can be described, one of the ways it can be described is a way to cross the floods, to cross over to the further shore. Um, and that the raft that can carry us across is um, the path, the the middle path, the eightfold path, also referred to as the fourth noble truth, which is our ways of skillful speech, wise intention, wise meditation practice, right speech, all, all, the, all the aspects of the eightfold path that carry us to the further shore or our onward leading that carry us out of the floods of this life to safety, to freedom. These currents that sweep us into our habitual reactivity is what we're trying to be, to cross over, to um, to be able to respond skillfully to life instead of being tossed around. Sometimes I 
you can feel like a marionette puppet, you know, that have a, a handle with strings and the puppet is being manipulated by unseen forces, you know, in our reactivity. Um, yeah, so this, all this, this time, which feels like it's this time, but it's not, it's, this is life, <laughs> you know, in the time of the Buddha, there were wars and sickness and aging and death and probably pandemics, um, and, um, not so different. So there's a really well-respected teacher named Ajahn Suchito, who says it this way about these floods. Interest in deep change gets triggered by the feeling of being swept along by events, by the sense of being overwhelmed by and even going under the tides of worries, duties, and pressures. That's the floods. And crossing them is about coming through all that to find some firm ground. It takes some work, some skill, but we can do it. But the, the very first part of that quote, he says, interest in Jeep change gets triggered by this that it's really by feeling the pain of overwhelm and fear and lack of control and that that compels us to get on the path to show up on a wednesday night to be together in this zoom or wherever you whenever you're watching it if you are on youtube and hmm to meet with like-minded, heart-minded people and practice together. That we, we show up for ourselves and for each other and for this world because, because we've been triggered by these feelings of the floods. But like, and likewise, to know that you have touched the other shore you know it's possible. You have had times of peace, presence, joy, ease in the midst of this life. You know that it's possible for you because you've had that experience. Times of feeling uncontracted, feeling interconnected, compassion, natural compassion, where you're free from habitual reactivity and able to see clearly and respond kindly to yourself, to others, to all beings, to the environment. You know, so as Ajahn Suchito is saying there, you know, it takes some work and some skill, but we can do it. And so to remember that and to remember that you have known that, you know, is it in nature? Is it with friends? Is it when you're in stillness and quietude in yourself or with animal companions or um, when you're doing your creative work? You know, that there's lots of ways in. And it's, it could heal the world. These are, these aren't selfish practices. If we, if we all are crossing through these floods out of reactivity and into wisdom and compassion, anything's possible. Um, so tonight I'm just going to mention what there's 
four floods. These, these are called asavas in Pali for those who are interested in the Pali, but there's traditionally four floods that are taught and referred to and uh, need to be surpassed for us to be completely free like the Buddha became. And, um, and then next week, you'll have to tune in, we're going to talk about two particular tools for crossing the floods. Um, which will be patience and forbearance. So a clue there. Okay, so the first flood is the flood of sensuality. And, and this means the constant grasping onto what we know is fleeting, temporary, because we imagine we're sold the bill of goods that that is going to bring lasting happiness. If I get that, if I get this person, if I get this body, if I get, 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 get. That is the flood of sensuality. The, the, the sense doors, our eyes, ears, nose, mouth, touch, and mind, um, are conditioned by the, the floods of our culture and the floods of just being a human being um, to reach for what's pleasant. But if we cling to it and are not seen clearly, these are fleeting and temporary. And we all know by now <laughs> that it, you just need the next thing the next thing and the next thing or need more of that thing and etc. It does not bring us lasting satisfaction. It certainly does not bring us to the other shore. The second flood is called the flood of becoming. <laughs> I'm not going to go deep into this one tonight, but it's this uh, sense of um, Pulling in our very selected memories from our past to create a sense of who I am and projecting it into a future story about who I'm going to be. And that can be a negative story, a positive story, how we want others to see us, how we think others are going to see us. And this is the flood of becoming. It's creating a sense of a self that is falsely seen as being permanent, constant, separate being that isn't conditioned by all the conditions and constantly changing. Oh, chihuahuas, let me turn that, this uh, extra sound buffer off here. Hopefully that's helping. Hmm, I might have to let them out. The third flood is the one I want to talk a little bit more about tonight before we get to our practice. And that's the flood of views. Can you still hear the chihuahuas barking through the sound? A little bit, a little bit. Okay, thank you. Um, we're just going to have to ride it out. So the, the flood of views is... I think something that's really uh, escalated right now in our world, who's right and who's wrong, who's good, who's bad, who's on my team and who isn't, all of, all of this. And so it's the, the generalized beliefs speculation, opinions, dogmas that we cling to as being right or wrong. You'll you're hear the theme through all of these is whether it's clung to, right? If, and in order to create a standpoint, my position, it's also creating a self. I, this is how, and, and when we do that, it stops the conversation. There's no conversation that happens. Um, yeah, and so 
seeing that our viewpoint, our position that we think is right, I certainly <laughs> have a lot of this in myself, it, to see that it is also conditioned, comes from where we live, how we grew up, our uh, race, our gender identity, our, you know, our conditioning it has created our viewpoint. And if we li lived a completely different life in a different country with, a, you know, all the different factors, we would have completely different views that we would also really cling to likely. So to beware of when we get too rigid in our views and then the conversation stops there's no um curiosity there's no discussion no investigation that happens when we cling to it um the the last flood i'll mention tonight is um the flood of ignorance and this one is the most fundamental that's underlying all of the floods um, and this this means not seeing clearly, not under, not seeing the nature of things, not seeing with wisdom and clear, not seeing the true nature of things, delusion. Yeah, and so this is why we have the Four Noble Truths to help us uh, see with penetrating insight that, um, and we have the whole path to help us respond skillfully to life and see clearly. Um, so ne next week, I wanna talk more about two particular aspects of what are called the paramis or perfections that help us to cross through the floods. And I'll just give you a, a hint of it here. Uh, this is um, from, the te from one of the stories from the time of the Buddha of um, where someone has approached the Buddha and, and, uh, and said, how dear sir, did you cross the flood? Because Buddha, is an honorific name that means awakened one and which means he has crossed the floods and is on the further shore and is free from these floods. So someone is approached and is asking, how did you cross the floods? And he replied, by not halting friend and by not straining, I crossed the flood. Not halting and not straining. And as you may be feeling, the, the person asking says is like, yeah, but what does that mean? And so they say, but how is it, dear sir, that by not halting and by not straining, you cross the flood? And he says, when I came to a standstill, friend, then I sank. But when I struggled, then I got swept away. It is in this way, friend, that by not halting and by not straining, I cross the flood. So this is where patience and determination come, come through of not pushing and not stopping, having the patience to endure and continue and also not go too quickly, not to strain and push is how we cross the flood. So we're going to talk more about that next week. Um, but it might be something to reflect on for this coming week for you. We, we sometimes have homework in our little Zoom group here. So your homework may be to reflect on what we uh, were chatting about before this uh, recording about um, just practicing with that saying hello to every moment and asking yourself, how am I? And then sometimes what is needed. So that could be a practice for this week. Or you might just reflect on these two qualities that I'm, I'm going to speak more about next week of 
patience and endurance and how that's showing up in your life, in how you're crossing the floods. Yeah. All right. So let's have a have a practice. It's all about practicing. This is our little laboratory where we practice these skills that help us in our daily life to cross the floods. So adjust your posture. You can turn away from the computer or dim your lights. Make sure you're comfortable. And when we check in with ourselves, we're noticing how's our energy? Do we need to have a really upright posture? If you're in a lot of pain, you might need to lay down. Um, these are practices of awakening. So it's, it's helpful to have some uprightness through your posture to help you stay, have some energy. And then as you're, as you're settling, just feel if you need any movements to release any tension. Is it helpful for you to close your eyes or rest your eyes or have your eyes slightly open? If you're feeling very sleepy, it may be helpful to have your eyes a little bit open. I'm just taking some time here to relax any tension in the face. Easing the shoulders. Relaxing the hands. And see if there's some degree of softening that can happen for you in the belly, those inner layers of the belly or heart. And as the upper body is relaxing, we may begin to feel more weightedness through the pelvis, groundedness through the legs and feet. And here we are in the center of this moment, just saying hello to this moment. Whatever sounds and sensations, states of heart or mind are here.
as if we're greeting ourselves in the mirror and asking really, really wanting to know how are you? How's your energy? Your mind states, your body, your heart, For these next few moments, just keep floating that question into your awareness. How are you? And you may find that there's layers and layers. Underneath the restlessness, there might be a lot of deep fatigue. Underneath the anger, there might be a lot of fear or grief. And just keep showing up for yourself in these next few moments. And if there's something showing up in your experience in this present moment that feels like it needs some kind attention, something that feels sticky or is hooking you, you might ask, float the question, what's needed? As if you're greeting a friend and hearing what's troubling them and you really are offering what's what's needed and then listen Is there a response that feels like it would balance what's showing up for you? If there's harshness, is there some compassion kind phrases that will help you cross through that flood? If there's contraction, will some spacious attention help you feel less swept away with it?
If you feel caught in turbulence and turmoil of conflicting currents, perhaps a steadying anchor like the breath. And if at times you notice that you've been swept along with some current, perhaps you can notice its texture, its flavor. Is it a flood of sensuality of grasping on to what we imagine will bring lasting satisfaction? Is it a flood of becoming a story about who you are or of views?
What kind of current pulls your attention from the present moment? When we become still, we might be able to notice these undercurrents that are constantly influencing the bubbling stream of the mind. Interest in deep change gets triggered by the feeling of being swept along. It takes some work 
some skill, but we can do it. Thank you for joining this practice. If you've joined on YouTube and um, there will kind of be a part two next week when we talk about these particular aspects that th there's many aspects, of course, in many ways to cross the floods, but um, these two we're going to talk about in particular patience and endurance or uh, determination. So thanks for joining and um, wishing you peace and ease 